everyone, welcome back to Power Apps Academy. My name's Barry. Um, in this video, we're going to be talking about buttons and colors of buttons. So when you click a button, it let's say it changes color as you click it, and then it holds that color until another button is clicked, and then that button gets the color and the other one changes back. So it just helps you identify what the last button was that was clicked, and it holds that until another button is clicked. Might be useful for like changing between tabs uh, in the screen so you know which tab you're on that kind of thing some other use cases as well i'm sure there's lots of new ones um but it, this video is going to teach you how to do that and um, some other tips and tricks around colors and settings of colors uh, within your app so it shouldn't take uh, too long so hopefully you'll stick by us and before we jump into it please do smash up the likes it really helps us grow our channel and get more videos out to you guys and hopefully if you appreciate these and you enjoy the content then you can just very quickly smash that like button please subscribe as well we'd love to have you part of our community and our channel so let's jump into how the app works quickly and then we'll show you exactly how to configure it from scratch okay I'm down here now in the corner um, hopefully you can see the screen uh, okay before we go into that just quickly check out powerappify.com our partner over here this is where you can get all the, all the app templates for your business they're really easy simple to install have documentation all that kind of stuff and really affordable as well so um, you know the, the, do do start off here check what you can get downloaded and get get working on them customize them for your business uh, easy very easy to do okay uh, this is the app that we've been working on that we're going to use for our demo today. Um, it's basically a form that you can fill in. Let's just play it quickly. So there's a ticket number. Let's say create new form. And you can see I've clicked on that button. It's gone the dark purple color and it's shown the form. I can select, let's say, IT. I could have selected anyone. And let's say I need help installing some software. Obviously, it would be more specific. This is just an example. Then I could attach a file. Let's say it's just an image. And then I can. It's just uploading that. There we go. And then I can submit that. There we go. Right. That submits an email to that team or to a ticketing system or whatever you wanted to do. And that's that app. Um, if you want more info about that app, I'll put some links in the to the links to the videos we've done just to create that below um, but let's go back to what we're working on today and these are these buttons over here so um, let's go back into it you can see I can hide the form now that's gone now you know which button I've selected and then if I click on the third one surprise you can see oh why don't developers like nature because it has too many bugs <laughs> right okay uh, no comment um, right and you can see that one's uh, purple so so that's what we're doing today um, and there's also a way I'll show you how you can set colors because you might have um, a custom branded color and every time you want to add that color somewhere you have to remember what the hex is or whatever the, the uh, code is for that color and it can, can be a bit annoying so you can create a settings page so we're going to have a look at how to do that as well all right cool so let's uh, let's dive right into it okay so um, I've opened up, this is the app before I've added the buttons and the settings, so I'm going to talk you through everything that needs to be done. Um, right, let me see if I can find what I need to work on. Okay, right, hopefully you can see the screen. Right, the first thing that we're going to do um, is we are going to create a new screen. If we click over here, uh, just a blank screen. I'm going to go down to the button and we're going to call this just to rename, click on those buttons. So we're going to call this, oh, let's just call it settings, okay? So we're going to call it settings, and um, on the screen, we are going to add in two text labels, okay? One, and I'm just going to control C for copy uh, and control V for paste, or you could just right click, copy and paste, okay? Um, the first one we're going to call, uh, let's just uh, rename this, yeah. um, dark purple dot color, American spelling there for you, and then, oh, what happened there? Sorry, let me just, oh, 
can just change the text as well or purple oh, color so I've changed the name of the label and the text of the label and for some reason it is not working as I expected dot color right okay and on this one we let's just change the text first uh, light purple dot color okay so cool so we've got two there dark purple dot color and light purple dot color so um, let's say these are some custom colors that we have um, and the first one is dark purple dot color let me just find what my color is so this is my hex value for my dark purple just going to go into here and I'm going to select the property for the label and I'm going to go to color because we want to adjust what the color is now you get the the RGBA th there's loads of details around coloring so I'm not going to go into that at the moment I'm using a hex value so I'm just going to copy and paste that in there all right you can find the hex value um, you can go into the color platelet over here you can see custom and when you select your color you can see a hex value there so I've got a, a hex value that I'm using so the color value which is hex is there so that's my dark purple you probably can't see those dark purples to actually change color and then um, my light purple color I'm gonna go control C my light purple I'm gonna select it and then I'm going to find the color property of that and then I'm going to do exactly the same. Control V. There we go. You can see. So I've got dark purple dot color, light purple dot color, and I'm just going to rename the label as well. Rename that to light purple dot color. Cool. All right. So that's my setting screen. Um, I'll show you how that works just now. But we now are going to shoot back to our main screen and we're going to create some copies I'm just going to let's just copy and paste the other way so you can see what I'm doing paste All right so I just want another button and I'm going to use control C and control V which is another shortcut to copy and paste on your keyboard and then I'm going to um, write so I'm going to call this hide form All right and we're going to call this surprise surprise button cool all right so we've got the three buttons now what we want to do is we um, want to on the on select of the button we want to set up a variable okay so the variable is going to help us identify when the button's been selected so um, I'm just going to click on that uh, and I've already got all the code that runs on that button anyway so I'm just going to put it at the top something new and we're going to put a comment try and put the comments on all your code guys it, and as you do it um, it just helps you understand what that line of code does because it's very easy to lose track after you build it out um, and the app gets bigger and bigger you're going, you're, you're going like oh what was I trying to do there and what does that reference so the more you put in uh, the better as soon as you do it as well to set uh, the color uh, of the button and then I'm just going to put C uh, button fill property. Okay, that just helps me understand where I need to look to see what this variable does. And then uh, the variable is going to do setting a variable. So I'm um, setting a global variable here called var button ID. And then I'm going to set the, um, when, when this button's clicked, I'm going to set the value of that variable to zero okay and then don't forget the semicolon on there because we've got other bits of code down below so that's simply what it does now I'm going to do I'm just going to copy that control C for each button um, 
I am going to let's just delete this because I've copied and pasted this button. I'm just going to set var. I'm just going to set that to false, so it hides everything. It's the opposite. And go back and have a look. You, you can actually see here there's two ways of setting variables. There's co update context, which uh, is used for basically setting variables within a screen, just changes the context of that variable. And then there's a global variable, which is what we're using up here, um, which is setting this var button ID to 1. Uh, for this button, let's just change that to 1. And then I'm going to copy and paste into the surprise button. I'm just going to delete all of this because we don't need any of that for the surprise button. Uh, this is going to be two and two over here. Okay, and then we'll have to read some funny uh, joke on that one, didn't we? So uh, um, if you haven't used the notify, that's what that's what you can use to display some text on the screen when the button's pushed. That's the code for it. Display a message for six seconds. So notify. So why don't developers like nature? Because there's too many bugs. Ha ha ha. And then the notification type. Um, you can see there's di three different options there. This one error just to make it stand out. And then 6,000 milliseconds, which is six seconds. So that's what happens when we push that button. Okay, cool. So now we've got our three buttons set up. Each one. Um, uh, and, and what we can do is actually just to help us, we can just add in a, uh, a label and then we can set this to that, that var, that variable that we used when the, we click a button. So var, what do we put it? Button ID. And just make sure it's white so we can see it. Cool, I think there's something in there. Let's just, you can use alt and click on the button. There you, get, you can see it's zero. We expect a one there and a two. Cool. Okay, so um, that just help you us know that that uh, button's been pushed. We can delete that or hide it later. But now we want to actually do the magic uh, that holds the color of the button. Okay. So um, so what property do you think we need to complete? Uh, add in for each button. Any guesses? If you guessed fill, then you're right. Okay, so fill color is normally for the color of like a text, and if you want to fill something, which is the background or the color of the button, then you you go to fill. And uh, can anyone guess what function we're going to use within the fill? Right, it's an if function, which is what we use for very many things within Power Apps and really useful. So we want to say if the, that global variable called var button ID, so if var button ID is equal to, what, what's the var button ID when we click the first one? I think it was zero. Yeah. So if, if that variable is equal to zero, then now we'd have to Remember before we set up the settings page, if we hadn't done that, we would have had to set up you know, the hex value and we'd have to go, oh, what was the hex value again? Can we remember? So, but if we use our settings page, we can just go dark, purple color. Oh, dark purple color. Sorry, let me just check on something. Dark purple color. Sorry guys, I actually uh, made a mistake. So I'm gonna go back and fix it quickly. Otherwise that's gonna confuse us. So just in here, in the settings page, I've labeled these dot color. I'm just gonna rename, take the color part out because the color is the actual property. So uh, we don't wanna confuse it. We just wanna do light purple and dark purple. Okay, so there we go, light purple and dark purple let's go back to our screen um so we can just click on here to find where we left off so we want um what's going to be first dark purple so if it's clicked we want it to be dark purple there we go dark purple dot and what the what's the property that we want of that dark purple down here it is the color property right 
So we want it to be dark purple the color. And if not, we want it to be light purple the color. The color property of the light purple text box. Okay? And that just uh, that just makes it easy to remember. And um, trust me, there's a lot of time saving that is done by using that. Okay? Don't forget to put your explanation text. I'm not going to do it here, just, just for the interest of time. And I'm going to... For the rest, for the other buttons, I'm going to add in the fill property for these as well. So I just go to fill. I'm just going to copy and paste what I did for the other one. Oops. Control V. Except on this, when it is one for this button, then set this one to dark purple. Else, set it to light purple. So if it's one, it'll set dark purple. Anything else, any other value, it'll just go to light purple, which is exactly what we want, and that's why it works for more than two buttons or any number of buttons because there's always going to be the else so else is any other value so in this one we're going to be um, fill there's fill there we go in this one we're going to go two so if the value is two then this one's going to be dark purple otherwise it's going to be light purple Great, so let's um, go into play mode. What are we expecting? When we click on this, it's going to go to dark purple. There we go. The other one's changed color. Click on here. You can see it's one for this one. And surprise me, there we go. Right, so that's it. Um, hopefully, you found that useful. Um, another useful tip to learn for your power apps development just remember keep it up guys keep practicing that's how you get good watch loads of videos to learn more please like and subscribe we'll much appreciate it otherwise thanks for listening and we'll speak to you soon